Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Eye on Port Live on Ghana Television. The program is brought to you by Ghana Revenue Authority, West Blue Consulting, Ghana Community Network Services, that's GCNet, and also Goyle Company Limited. Folks, uh, the past couple of weeks, we have been discussing uh, the agencies that operate in the port, what they do, where are the missing links, why are things not moving the way they should move, although a lot of efforts are being made to ensure that things move very fast and we have a very easy way of clearing goods out of our ports. This week we have engaged the Port Health. We have also engaged the plant quarantine uh, services of the uh, Ministry of Food and Agriculture to find out exactly what they do in the port and what are some of the missing links. For instance, we found out that the Port Health is supposed to vaccinate every individual who moves around the port area, yet that has never been done. Even though the Port Health itself was established somewhere in the 19th century, and we are in the 21st century, the folks around the port who move around there have never been vaccinated. All of that come up next. The Port Health Unit and Plant Quarantine Services have admitted their inabilities in executing some of their mandates in the port clearance chain as a result of absence of coordination among agencies that work in the port. Addressing issues regarding the roles in the port clearance chain during a live television engagement with Ion Port, the Director of Port Health, Raphael John Marfo, admitted that their control is limited as disinfection of cargo itself is not attained. The Director of Port Health said his outfit is only able to disinfect the exterior parts of containers which carry cargo. Hence, vectors and pests inside cargoes are not eliminated since cargoes are sealed. What Port Health is currently doing is doing disinfection of containers. Disinfection of containers, you realize it started just this May. And we're taking care of microbes of public health importance, not vectors of public health, because until they open, you cannot see the vectors in there. Raphael John Marfo revealed that the Port Health is also currently embarking on a thorough disinfection of the areas in and around the port against rodents who can spread diseases or destroy cargo. According to him, it is in this light that all food vendors in the port area are issued with medical certificates that license their businesses. The Port Health Director also admitted that although his outfit is mandated to vaccinate every individual who works around the port, that is all port users, this aspect of their job is yet to be fulfilled. Actually, it's not only the, the travelers, but anybody working at the port. So all this while, you haven't vaccinated the people uh, who work around the port? No, for now, no. But that's been risky. He said the Port Health Unit is established in Ghana to check and forestall any public health risk of international concern at the ports. The director of Port Health added that his outfit is mandated to ensure all constituents of vessels that call Ghana's ports are compliant with all WHO regulations on spread of diseases, as well as instill local public health conventions on food and hygiene. Deputy Director of Plant Quarantine, Prudence Atipo, said his outfit is a technical directorate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, whose core mandate is to prevent the introduction and spread of pests of plants and plant products. He said the regulation is done through inspection of cargo elements, which he described as pathways for the conveyance of pests and parasites. According to Prudence Atipo, a major problem of the plant quarantine is currently their inability to inspect plants and plant products that are imported by the free zones companies due to some free zones laws. Because they are free zone, they do not pass through the red channel for inspection. So I can see. we need to follow these goods to their destination. So they, they go through the green channel. They go through the green channel. And you don't get we to inspect. We don't get to inspect because Yet we they are bring not in plants. notified. That's we, free zones. Yeah, they bring in plans. On the current customs risk management regime in place, which allows for only a category of goods that are labeled red to be subjected to physical inspection, the plants quarantine deputy director said it is making it difficult for his outfit to be in full control what pests and parasites make it into our country as goods are not subjected to physical examination, may be potential carriers of such pests and parasites. If the containers are scanned, mm -hmm. that is where we have a challenge because it doesn't pass through the red channel 
for us to do the physical inspection. Also, the Joint Inspection Directive by the government only allows three agencies to be involved in physical inspection process at the port. The two health regulatory agencies, Port Health and Plant Quarantine, ask for closer collaborations between these mandated inspection agencies with their outfits whenever cargo that may pose threats to public health are being inspected in order to apply their expertise and prevent clearance of unhealthy goods and their accompanying pests and parasites. If a custom officer sees something that is not in his domain, he's he supposed to refer to other that countries. That is that what is they what do. Said. And they work effectively. You know, maybe we need to have a second look at those who are supposed to go. In. If it's three, which agencies uh, that is the issue related to health? Is it, or, or are we and only how concentrated are they coordinating with, with you? the other agencies? He suggested that an overarching institution like the GPHA to regulate all inspections is needed to manage all the lapses associated with inspection and clearance to ensure efficiency. I equally put this problem to or the blame on the port authorities. There's the need for them to always call for meetings, for coordination. Got port Is it the port authority you mm. expect them to do it? No, they can bring them together. Okay. Because most of the state institutions, all these are state institutions, and everybody thinks that the law says I should do this. You, and you think the port authority has the power to say because that all the agencies all should work? Because working here, and then the port authorities can say, please, we are working for the state. Both Port Health and Plant Quarantine expressed worry over the fact that agencies who work in the port clearance chain work in silos, which is a major bottleneck to trade facilitation. In Ghana, stakeholders, especially government institutions, are working in silos. Why? That is the issue. Everybody wants to be seen as the one doing this. So when issues like this come, this is health, complete health. And then you take half out of this. So in the coming weeks, we will be tackling other agencies. And after that, we will be picking the issues that have come out of our conversations with the agencies and begin to deal with them one after the other. In the meantime, people, the World Oceans Day, uh, the entire month of June is dedicated to uh, the World Oceans Day. And the Port and Harbors Authority has hosted an event to commemorate the World Oceans Day here in Ghana. The World Oceans Day is marked globally to create awareness to protect and restore the world's ocean that connects the earth by taking action locally and on a global scale inspiring change in the management of the world's oceans. The day is intended to provide an opportunity for people to reflect on the benefits that oceans provide and emphasize an individual and collective duty to sustainably manage the oceans by meeting current needs without compromising those of future generations. Players in the Ghanaian environment Environment, maritime and fashion industry have assembled to mark the day under the global theme Gender in the Oceans in Tema. George Bredu, General Manager for Special Duties and Technical Assistant to the Director General of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. The organization that hosted that event said in view of the fact that the port is the interface between the ocean and land makes GPHA much concerned about issues of ocean management. This means higher privileges to the resources of the ocean, and at the same time, higher responsibilities towards protecting the marine environment as against countries which are not directly joined to the ocean. Patricia PJ, Deputy Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, pointed out the country's dependence on the fish stock it generates yearly among other significant uses of the ocean, and charge the public to desist unhealthy practices along and within Ghana's oceans. It is however pathetic that we do not fully enjoy the benefits of our beautiful be uh, beaches. Instead, we desecrate them by defecating them openly. It is time we discontinue from such activity. Deputy <laughs> Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Francis Kinsley Atukujo, highlighted the role women play in fish-based decisions at the community level, but lamented the inadequate representation of women at the governmental level. In Ghana, women play a very key role in the decision-making in the coastal uh, areas. Unfortunately, at the national level, we involve very little of the women in making certain key decisions. 
Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Environment, Ado Frempong, emphasized that the depletion of fishes in the country's ocean space is due to the negligence of Ghanaians who engage in degradable activities such as dumping of plastics in the oceans. Ebenezer Apasapong, Deputy Executive Director of the Environmental Protection Agency, urged stakeholders to practically demonstrate their willingness to sustainably harness the potential of the oceans. Mia J. Kraku II, the Temamanche, appealed to the fishing community to be devoted to an attitudinal change in approach towards the ocean. You notice that the World Oceans Day focused a lot on the role of women uh, within the port and maritime industry as well as within the fishing industry in promoting better oceans uh, in Africa and across the entire globe. Now, women within maritime industry are also being encouraged a lot more to do better in the industry to promote the growth of the port and maritime industry. This week, the Port Ladies Association have unveiled a fresh uniform to continue to look smart, elegant, and give them the power, the encouragement, and the zeal to sort of serve the public better when it comes to dealing with the ports. There is currently a growing level of interest to increase and improve the participation of women in the ports, shipping and maritime transport industry globally and nationally. In Ghana, the President of the Republic appointed the first ever female director of the port of Tema to oversee Ghana's largest commercial port, which is the port of Tema. The government and the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority continue to encourage the creation of more space for women in policy and decision-making positions in various business communities to help bridge the gender gap in the marine sector. From this background, the Ports Ladies Association of GPHA has officially unveiled a new dress code and uniform for ladies within the organization to uplift their image and confidence in undertaking their duties within the industry. Officially unveiling the new uniform forms for the port ladies, the first female director of the port of Tema, Sandra Opoku herself, a member of the Port Ladies Association Plus, said the new uniforms will help the ladies exude confidence in their service delivery at the port. You have some confidence, you know, dealing with the customers because you're really decked out nicely. And I can see all the different aspects, the trousers and the short sleeve. And as you know, ladies, when we do it, we do it well. The new uniforms displays GPHA's traditional colors, blue and yellow, but in a milder shade and come with a different tailoring style. There are two separate uniforms which were unveiled. One which has a yellow shirt beneath a blue jacket would be worn on Mondays and Tuesdays and the other, a blue shirt beneath the same blue jacket, worn on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Fridays are expected to be open for African wear. The president of the Port Ladies Association of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Philippa Amanda Ama, said the new uniform symbolizes newness and pride of the women who toil in the port business to drive the industry. We wanted to come out with something that we'll be proud and happy to wear and will also relate in the various the, the jobs that we do. It will make us look smart no matter the role you play in this authority. The ladies were entreated to wear the uniforms with decency and conviction to match the corporate image of GPHA and bear in mind that they are carrying the image of the entire country on their shoulders. So we wish the ladies very well and they look very nice in their uniforms, their fresh uniforms there. Moving away from that, customs have new bosses. The former uh, customs commissioner that isaac krenzel has given way to kennel kwejo damwa as the new commissioner of customs we want to let you know who uh, the current commissioner of customs is kennel kwejo damwa and then we will also let you know what mr isaac krenzel has also been able to do as a commissioner first of all kennel kwejo damwa for the customs. Kenel Kweju Damwa is the new Commissioner of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. After being appointed by the President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, in June 2019. Kenel Kweju Damwa is a retired military officer. He was commissioned into the Ghana Armed Forces as a lieutenant. In August 1985, he rose through the ranks and became a Kenel in 2007. He did all the relevant military courses culminating in the senior command and staff course at the Ghana Armed Forces Command 
and Staff College at Teshi in August 1996. He held several command and staff appointments at service and general headquarters. His last military appointment was Director Manpower Planning or Human Resources at the general headquarters, Bema Camp. He undertook military peacekeeping operations with the United Nations Unifil in Lebanon while in active service. In October 2006, Kenel Kwejo Damwa was called to the Ghana Bar as a barrister at law and solicitor. He later joined the Institute of Directors in December 2007. Growing up, Kenel Kwejo Damwa has been quite fluent in French. He studied French language in his secondary school days and pursued this at the Alliance Francaise. He obtained a DALF C2 certificate in December 2011 in French. He had his Bachelor of Science degree in 1982 at the University of Ghana, Legon. He further acquired a postgraduate certificate in public administration from the Ghana Institute of Management and Professional Administration in August 1996. He became an accountant A1 in March 1987. He also has an executive master's of business administration in finance from the University of Ghana. In December 2005, Kenel Kojo Damwa graduated with Master of Arts degree in International Affairs from the Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy, LECIA, at the University of Ghana, Legon. So now you know the new Commissioner of Customs, the one who left the seat for Kenel Kojo Damwa to take over is Isaac Krenzel. Isaac Krenzel hails from Ejuma Kubisiase in the central region but was born in Kumasi. He had a secondary education at Kumase High Senior Secondary School from 1986 to 1993. He holds, among others, Executive Masters in Business Administration, Finance, from the University of Ghana Business School. Isaac Krinzel is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, and also a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation, Ghana, and holds Chartered Diploma Certificate in Forensic Audit from the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. Isaac Krenzel has also participated in a wide range of conferences and seminars and studied wide, both locally and internationally. Notable amongst them are World Customs Organization Knowledge Academy for Customs and Trade in Brussels, Advanced Post Clearance Audit and Compliance Risk Management in Canada, Investigation of Computer and Electronic Crimes in, in Budapest, Hungary, Customs Risk Management in South Africa, Oil and Gas Financial Management at the University of Texas, and its Center for International Accounting Development. Isaac Krenzel was appointed Commissioner of Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority from April 2017 by the President of the Republic, Nana Adodanko Akufuado. Prior to this appointment, Isaac Krenzel was the Deputy Commissioner of Customs in charge of post-clearance audit. Isaac Krenzel was employed into the Customs Excise and Preventive Service SEPS, now Ghana Revenue Authority, GRE, Customs Division, in December 1989. He has also headed various departments in Customs, namely Purchasing, Accounts and Budget, Internal Audit, Account and Debt Recovery, Finance, Corporate Planning, and Change Management. In the integration and modernization of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Isaac Krenzel facilitated the change management process by selecting and training change agents to propagate the message to staff on successful movement for their then state to their future state. He was a project manager that led the process of setting up of the post clearance audit department with the objective to ensure holistic audit based customs control for trade facilitation and revenue maximization to achieve the goal of optimal revenue collection. Isaac Krenzel was welcomed into office as the Commissioner of Customs with the foremost task of implementing a major national policy on port reforms which was directed by the Vice President to remove all customs barriers on the corridors of Ghana and back on joint inspection with three other agencies at all ports and commence paperless port operations by September 1st, 2017, about five months since he was appointed. Leading the customs team, Isaac Krenzel executed all three tasks with satisfaction as the nation's revenue was said to have increased significantly within the first quarter of the implementation of those policies. Isaac Krenzel also defied all odds, particularly from trader union and freight forwarders, and executed the implementation of the cargo tracking note CTN in October 15, 2018, and implemented the policy which has now placed about 65% of imported cargo on the CTN system. 
Isaac Crintel was also charged to ensure the reduction of duties on all imported general goods by 50%, whilst the home delivery values of cars were to be reduced by 30%. Isaac Crintel was also charged to implement the Unipass project, which is expected to take over IT solutions provision on behalf of customs, and now at its final stages. Again, he was charged to implement the first port rule, which would ensure that transit countries pay their duties in Ghana before having the goods exit the country he has executed this tax and is almost at its final stage as a crinsel embarked on reforms to improve the transit trade as he helped to abolish the guru boy syndrome at the nation's borders and abolish the payment of 10,000 cfa to guru boys at the borders he joined other stakeholder agencies including the ghana ports and harbors authority and ghana shippers authority on several trade missions to woo yeah, transit yeah, market for Ghana's ports. Isaac Crintel is widely viewed as one of the busiest commissioners of customs in Ghana ever, with a lot of policy directives on his plate, yet successfully implemented almost all of them. This particular commissioner of uh, the division that we have today, of customs co co yeah, Commissioner Crintel, he's been one very active commissioner. And day in, day out, you realize that new directives are coming, yeah. all in the bid to get processes properly tightened up. In spite of all his busy schedules, everyone within the port community and beyond <laughs> praises <laughs> Isaac Crinsell <laughs> for his humility <laughs> and friendliness. The community says Isaac Crinsell will pick his call yes. at the first ring, regardless of whoever is calling, and was willing to receive and listen to everyone who sought his attention. In short, he was a commissioner who gave a human face to an open-door policy. <laughs> Oh, bra 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 bra, because meeting crab at Obey Ejumana Mount. The American Sanya Minstrel, because only by age, my pa. Oh, problem no crown and Casa, oh, tea. Then you know, because I didn't say. The human relationship is very good. Oh, Conwa, we are approachable. But officers, we are not going to be able to do this. But on this, sir. He also engaged well with all stakeholders and was always present when he was needed in the interest of the trade, the national economy, and the country as a whole. For us on Iron Port, for the first time, he assisted together with the Commissioner General to have Ghana Revenue Authority join other stakeholders like GCNet, Goyle, and West Blue Consulting to support this authoritative program, Iron Port on National Television. Iron Port sincerely wish him well as he hands over the, the baton of responsibilities to Kenel Kwejo Damoa as a Commissioner of the Customs Division, Ghana Revenue Authority. Iron Port can only wish Isaac Crinsel very well wherever he uh, moves next in all his life endeavors. Iron Port returns after the break. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Now welcome back from the break. You are still watching Iron Port. And next up are news and activities around the port industry, particularly the international news. Two tankers were damaged in a suspected attack in the Gulf of Oman near the Strait of Hormuz on June 13. The product carrier, Kokuka Courageous, operated by BSM Ship Management Singapore, suffered damage to the starboard side. The company said that a full-scale emergency response was launched after the incident and the vessel's crew of 21 abandoned ship. The 27,000 death weight tonnage Kokuka Courageous remains in the area and is not in any danger of sinking, the company said, adding that the cargo of methanol is intact. The vessel is about 70 nautical miles from Fujaira and about 14 nautical miles from the coast of Iran. Dutch salvage company Royal Boscalis Westminster NV has been appointed 
as the salva for the frontline and BSM tankers that were hit on June 13th in the Gulf of Oman in a suspected attack. Shortly after the incidents, the insurers of both vessels appointed Boscalis subsidiary SMIT Salvage to salvage the vessels and their cargo. The company further said that the Kokuka Courageous, with a methanol cargo on board, is now in a stable condition. A towing connection was established yesterday afternoon and the crew was able to return to the vessel. The tanker is currently being towed to a port in the Gulf region. That's it for this week's episode of Iron Paw. Thank you for watching. And also thanks to the entire crew for supporting the program. Lawrence Gezi produced it. It was supported ably by Frank Gomelosio, Alfred Chiagbe, Isaac Tete, also Kada Faisal, Ernest Thompson, Robert Nyantechi, Godwin Kabuti, Solomon Anderson, Jobon, Jolavo, Flavia Akpai, the executive producers of this program, Nana Isi Sudeberg, and Esther Jibidonko.